Hello everybody and welcome to another video and this one might be a bit of a predictable choice uh, but just a couple of days ago Linkin Park released a new single um, shortly after announcing the fact that they have bought in a new singer. Now <clears throat> this announcement of the uh, new lead vocalist um, Emily Armstrong was met with quite a lot of positivity but unfortunately it was also met with quite a lot of negativity, a lot of toxic and, quite honestly, unnecessarily vitriolic people saying, you know, this isn't Linkin Park, you can't replace Chester Bennington, the band should change their name because Chester is Linkin Park. And, you know, a lot of people throwing a hell of a lot of poison and insults about. And personally, I think that it's, com well, I think that's completely unnecessary. There is no point to it. Because there is a long history of bands, beloved bands, moving on to another phase with a different vocalist. Look at ACDC. When, when Bon Scott died and Brian Johnson came in, did ACDC stop being ACDC? No. They carried on and they have been incredibly popular for the longest time. Iron Maiden, when Bruce Dickinson left and was replaced with Blaze Bailey, did the band stop being Iron Maiden? Because Bruce Dickinson, you know, he was the front man. He was the identity of the band. Did Iron Maiden stop being Iron Maiden? No, they didn't. Pink Floyd, when Sid Barrett went, did they stop being Pink Floyd? No. Black Sabbath, my God, how many different singers has Black Sabbath been through? You know, they... Removed Ozzy Osbourne from the band, they replaced... I mean, I think Ronnie James Dio was a singer for Black Sabbath at one point. There were several other singers that stood in for Black Sabbath, whilst Ozzy Osbourne was no longer part of the band. You know, this is not a new thing. This has happened hundreds of times throughout history to some very, very well-known bands. So throwing around all this poison, saying, you know, Emily Armstrong, oh, she, she can't replace Jester Bennington, she can't even come close to him you know Lincoln Park shouldn't be called Lincoln Park anymore because it's not Lincoln Park without Chester Bennington you know no this is a band who have moved to a new phase with a new singer simple as that they're not replacing Chester they're moving on to a new era because well they've they had no choice I'm sure if Chester were still alive the band would still be going strong but because Chester is no longer here, they've decided we still want to keep making music we're just going to move to a different phase, we're going to bring someone else in and they've obviously taken a very long time to come to this decision I mean it's been, what is it, seven years now since we lost Chester Bennington and that was a huge and profound loss you know, he was an incredibly talented incredibly lovely man but he is no longer here he is no longer part of the band and, you know, they're not trying to, like, erase him from the history of the band. They're not trying to replace him, because let's face it, you cannot replace Chester Bennington. It would be an impossible ask. You know, so they've basically just gone, right, we're going to carry on doing what we were doing, but we're going to move on to a new era with a new singer. Simple as that. You know, they're not trying to replace him. They're not trying to replicate or emulate what he did for the band. And for the most part, the band is still the same band. You know, they're missing Chester, yes, and I believe uh, their original drummer has also moved on. You know, he, he I, I don't know whether he felt he couldn't or he just wouldn't be part of a new version of Linkin Park. That's, you know, for the most part, the band is still the same band. Well, they've just brought in someone new. Now, like I said, they've, re they've brought in... Um, Emily Armstrong. I've never heard of this woman before. Um, so I wanted to find out a bit more about her. It says here, Emily uh, Marsha Armstrong, born May 6th, 1986, is an American singer, songwriter and musician uh, who co-founded the band Dead Sarah in 2005. Uh, she was then announced as Linkin Park's new co-lead vocalist in September 2024. So there's that. Uh, so... I wanted to have a look up at who Dead Sarah were. And like I said, they've been around since 2002, 2005, I think it was. 
And that says Dead Sarah is an American rock band from Los Angeles consisting of Emily Armstrong, um, Susie Medley, and Sean Friday, uh, best known for their single Weatherman from their eponymous debut album uh, Dead Sarah, uh, which was released in 2012. Uh, their most recent album, Ain't It Tragic, was released in 2021. And they're considered uh, hard rock, punk, blues, grunge, and alternative rock. So it could well be a good fit for the band. But like I say, I have no idea who she is. I've never heard her sing before, to my knowledge. It's possible it might have been in the background of um, something or other. But I've never knowingly heard any music by Emily Armstrong or Dead Sarah. So, you know... I'm going into this with an open mind because, you know, I like Linkin Park. Believe it or not, when I first heard Linkin Park, I couldn't stand the band. But um, it seems ridiculous to think that now. But, you know, I'm going into this with an open mind because obviously you can't compare Emily to Chester because there is no comparison. There is no way you can compare the two. This is just a new phase with a new singer. I want to see what it's like. Uh, I wanted to watch the live stream, but I specifically avoided it just so I could do this because I wanted to find out what, well, what it was all about. So I'm going to have a look at their new track. They uh, released a new uh, music video called "The Emptiness Machine," which I believe has Emily Armstrong on vocals here. Uh, there are lyrics beneath the video. Uh, so I've got those to go by, so I think we'll have a look at that. Um, but before we do that, if you could just take a moment to like and subscribe if you haven't already, it would really, really help me out. You know, I've been doing this for about six years now, and not even 3% of people watching my videos are actually subscribed, which is a little disheartening. So, you know, if you could like and subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything, it takes a fraction of a second, and it would make the biggest difference to me and to the channel. But anyway... With that being said, let's jump into this track and see what we've got. So this is The Emptiness Machine by Linkin Park. Let's have a look. Your blades are sharpened with precision Flashing your favourite point of view I know you wait Just like you always do, just like you always do. Already pulling me in, already under my skin, and I know exactly how this ends. I let you cut me open just to watch me bleed. Gave up who I am for who you wanted me to be. Don't know why I'm hoping for what I won't receive.
there you go. The Emptiness Machine by Linkin Park. I like it. I think it's really good. You know, <coughs> excuse me. The, the song, it sounds pretty, well, pretty typical from what you would expect from Linkin Park. You know, the, the music, the actual, the overall cadence and sound of the song. It's, it's very Linkin Park. Even the, even the subject matter fits in. You know, wh whether this was a song that was actually written uh, prior to um, Chester's passing, I don't know. But the subject matter of the song fits in with pretty much all of the themes that we've come to know from Linkin Park. And it's a really, it's a really catchy piece of music. I really like it, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, within the track, um, Shinoda's taken over a majority of the vocals in this particular track, you know, and it's not unheard of, you know. He did, from time to time, do a majority of lyrics on some tracks, and then, you know, Chester would do the majority of lyrics on other tracks. So, you know, it's not unheard of, you know, they've not really switched the balance around too much. For all we know, there might be other tracks where Emily uh, does like the majority of tra of uh, vocals. I don't know, but with that being said, it sounded really good. And you know, Emily Armstrong, like I said, I've never heard her before. I've never heard her sing. I've never heard any of her music. I think she's a very good fit. She's got an incredibly she's got an incredibly powerful voice. You know, she's got that um sort of that sort of clean vocal style but she can put that grit and aggression in there as well which is something that you know we obviously know very well in their music from when Chester did it and I, I actually think she's a very very good fit I think it works very very well you know and all these people that are like naysaying is saying oh it's not Linkin Park without Chester you can't replace Chester yada yada blah 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 I'm guessing that they probably didn't actually listen because this sounded incredibly good to me I think it was brilliant I think she is a great fit. And like I said, they've obviously taken a long time to come to this decision to bring her in. You know, I mean, they teased a, uh, a live feed or they put up saying, like, N news is coming soon and put a timer on the screen. And it kept resetting and resetting and resetting and resetting. And now whether that was just a whether that was just a sort of not necessarily the word whether that was just a ploy or whatever to get people interested and invested and you know people want to go what's happening what's happening i really need to know now or whether or not it was just a general thing because they were still probably thinking is it a good idea to do this now i don't know but they've obviously taken a lot of time to consider when to do this and who to bring in i mean like i said at the beginning it's been about 7 years now since we lost Chester. And I, I believe Shinoda's done some music by himself in the interim. But there's obviously been a lot of consideration taken. You know, would it be a good idea to bring someone else in? You know, do we still want to keep doing this? And they've obviously thought very long and very hard about this. And they've obviously taken a lot of time deciding who to bring in to take over for vocal performance. So, you know, th this has been a well-considered decision. And I think it pays off. I think it works. I think it sounds great. She, like I said, e Emily has got a very powerful voice, which is what we needed. She has the ability to do the quieter, softer vocals, which we needed. She has the ability to do those powerful, emotional, sort of almost angry vocals, which is what we needed. And, you know... It just sounded like Linkin Park to me, just with a slightly different voice. And that's it. That's the important factor. It still sounded good. You know, and like I said at the beginning, there is you cannot compare Emily Armstrong to Chester Bennington. That's just unfair. Because for a start, there is no comparing to Chester. That's an impossible task. But when you start trying to compare... Emily Armstrong to Chester Bennington. You're putting, well, for a start, you're putting Emily Armstrong at an unfair disadvantage because she is a great singer in her own right. Like I said, I've never heard her before. This is the first time I've heard her sing. And she is a great vocalist. 
But like I said, trying to compare her to Chester immediately puts her at an unfair advantage. And I'm, I'm assuming there's probably several people like myself who've never heard of her before. You know, they're going, they're replacing Chester with Emily who? Who the fuck is that? Who is this? You know, and y you can kind of understand, you know, some people might be a bit upset by that because a lot of people really grew attached to Chester as I did myself. You know, I absolutely adored the man. I thought he was an outstanding individual. But, like I said, it's been seven years. We've got to take that on board and move on. You know, the band want to carry on doing what they enjoy doing. You know, and after a very long and considered decision, they decided we're going to bring in this new singer, we're going to move on to a new phase of who Linkin Park are, and we're going to carry on. And I say all fucking power to them. This track was great. I really liked it. You know, it was energetic, it was catchy. Um, Linkin Park are very well known for their tracks being relatively short. You know, if you look at... Uh, well, look at Hybrid Theory, you know, a lot of the songs were like about three minutes in total, you know, on average. But obviously they have done longer tracks. But this is a relatively short, catchy, energetic piece of music. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I think Emily Armstrong has been an outstanding choice. The performance was really good. Like I said, she excuse me she sounded great she's got the powerful voice she's got all the elements that we needed from a vocalist brilliant i like it um now like i said the actual subject matter of the track matter matter god i turned into that horrible american cliche of what a british accent is that was terrible the subject matter of the track itself like i said it sounds pretty typical for Lincoln Park, and whether, like I said, whether or not this was written before or after Chester's passing, I don't know. But, you know, he often wrote songs about pain, anguish, the suffering and conflict inside. You know, and that seems to be what this is about, you know. Uh, your blades are sharpened with precision, flashing your favourite point of view. I know you're waiting in the distance, just like you always do. Just like you always do. So your blades are sharpened with precision, flashing your favourite point of view. So, you know, you, you're already, you've already got all these weapons ready to try and take me down. You know, flashing your favourite point of view. So you're going to enforce, enforce your decision, enforce your opinion, enforce your choices upon me. You know, and if not, you're going to stab me in the back, maybe. Uh, I know you're waiting in the distance just like you always do. So again, this is like, as soon as I do or say anything i know you're just hovering in the background there waiting for me to say or do something so you can come in and try and knock me down you know tell me i'm wrong or try and force your opinion on me um already pulling me in already under my skin and i know exactly how this ends so again it's, it sounds like someone being manipulative manipulative i very much overpronounced that you know already pulling me in already under my skin so it's like you know you're already sort of enforcing your opinion on me you're already sort of telling me i'm wrong and but you're doing it in such a way that you're making it seem like it's my fault you know sort of and i know exactly how this ends so it's like i know that you're fucking with me i know that you're messing with my mind i know you're manipulating me i know exactly how this is gonna go um and then it goes into that chorus let you cut me open just to watch me bleed give up who i am for who who you wanted me to be don't know why i'm hoping for what i won't receive falling from for the promises of the emptiness machine the emptiness machine so again like i said this sounds like they're talking about a manipulative person you know you you cut me open just to watch me bleed so you, you hurt me just for the sake of hurting me you know you're messing with me just for the sake of messing with me because you like seeing me struggle you like seeing me suffer gave up who i am for who you wanted me to be again it's it's like these manipulative people they're sort of like you're behaving this way you shouldn't you should behave more like this and this is because they don't want you to be your individual person they want to have 
absolute control over you they want to tell you how to behave how to talk who you can talk to you know how how and what to eat how and what to drink whether or not you can do certain things at a certain time you know it's manipulative behavior and you know this person is trying to control this person you know and it's like i gave up who i am for who you wanted me to be so i stopped being myself i lost my identity because you wanted me to behave a different way and excuse me and i i did that for you i changed who i am fundamentally just to please you even though i know this is not the way things are supposed to go uh don't know why i'm hoping for what i won't receive you know i i i do these things to please you in the hope of getting your approval in hope of getting love and adoration from you but i know i'm not going to get it but i still keep doing it and i've mentioned this before like when you're in a situation like this it's it's a really weird situation because you know you're in a weird and fucked up situation, but you still, still, still feel compelled to go along with it. You start making excuses for this person. Who is fucking with you? Who is manipulating you? You start making excuses and you still keep looking for their approval, even though all the time in your head you're like, this is just so fucked up right now. You know, it's a weird situation that you, you cannot explain it. And even if you've been in that situation yourself, which I have, it's difficult to explain it to someone who's never been through it before. Because they just won't understand the level of fucked upness that it is. You know, just how much it messes with your mind. You know, so I don't know why I'm hoping for what I won't receive. So, like, I'm, I'm doing all this to please you in the hope of, you know, you reciprocating and giving me the love and the attention that I'm craving from you. Uh, falling for the promise of an empty of the emptiness machine so the emptiness machine being this manipulative person i'm guessing uh you know i keep falling for the promises that you make me you know you keep saying you're going to do this you keep saying you're going to behave this way and i keep believing you even though in my heart i know it's not going to happen i keep falling for it uh, going around like a revolver, it's been decided how we lose, because there's a fire under the altar, I keep, I keep on lying to you, I keep on lying to you. Already pulling me in, already under my skin, and I know exactly how this ends, I let you come, it goes back into that chorus. So, going around like a revolver, so, you know, we keep doing the same merry dance over and over and over again, you know. Repet, it's, uh, I can't remember who it was. It was a famous scientist who said, uh, you know, f futility is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. You know, I, I'm paraphrasing there. I can't remember exactly how the quote goes. But again, you know, just going round and round and round, doing the same old thing over and over again. It says it's been, been decided how we lose. So, you know, we can keep doing this over and over again, but the end result is, is inevitable. We know how this is going to end. Um because there's a fire under the altar, I'm not entirely sure. I keep on lying to you. Again, this is m probably the allusion to the fact that they're changing themselves to please this person, you know. They're not being true to who they really are. They are not being their true selves. They're assuming this persona that this manipulator wants them to have. And essentially, it's just a big lie. You know, the whole thing is a lie. So again, it goes, you know, already putting me in, already under my skin. I don't know exactly how this ends. I let you cut me open just to watch me bleed. Gave up how I am for who you wanted me to be. Don't know why I'm hoping for what I won't receive. Falling for the promise of an emptiness machine. And then it goes into a sort of bridge. I only wanted to be part of something. I only wanted to be part of, part of. I only wanted to be part of something. I only wanted to be, to be part of, part of. I only wanted to be part of something. I only wanted to be part. So again, you know, I wanted to be part of something great. I wanted to be part of a partnership, you know, a collaboration. I wanted to be with someone that, you know, you know, we could work together. We could, you know mutually benefit from each other that's all i wanted i wanted to be in a loving relationship i wanted to be in a in a successful partnership that's all i wanted and you know goes back into that chorus i just let you cut me open just to watch me bleed gave up who i am for who you wanted me to be don't know why i'm hoping so fucking naive 
falling for the promise of an emptiness machine, the emptiness machine. I only wanted to be part of something, the emptiness machine. I only wanted to be part of the emptiness machine. So, you know, the end of the chorus is slightly changed there. You know, I... I let you cut me open just to see me bleed. So again, I, I I keep letting you treat me this way. I gave up who I am, you know, t for who you wanted me to be. I changed my entire personality just to suit you. I don't know why I'm hoping so fucking naive. So it's like they know that they are being naive. They know they're never going to get what they want from this. They know that it's never going to go their way. But they still keep doing it. And like I said, unless you've been in that situation yourself, you would never understand you know and it's impossible to explain it you know but they know they're being naive they know that they're basically chasing shadows because no matter what they do no matter what they say as they said earlier they're just going round and round in circles doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results and it's just not happening you know and th there's that realization i know this is stupid i know this is pointless why do i keep trying but they still do so yeah, like I said, it's it's a it's pretty much typical subject matter for what we know from Linkin Park from like previous albums. You know, th there is a lot of Linkin Park songs songs that cover this sort of topic, and like I said, I personally I think it's brilliant. I think the music was great. I think the vocal performances were great. I think Emily Armstrong fits brilliantly into the band i know a lot of people are not going to agree i know there's going to be people who are just going to start spitting vitriol just for the sheer sake of it because there are a lot of people who do that they want to be offended by anything and everything you know so there are going to be some people who don't like it that's fair enough but there is no need to be so violently aggressive over it it is a made decision it is not your decision you have no say in the matter. They have made this decision. They have taken their time to make this decision. And I can guarantee it wasn't an easy one. But it is not up to you. If you don't like it, that's fine. You can ignore it. You can move on. I personally, I think it's great. I think it sounds brilliant. I think it was a very, very good choice. Like I said, they've probably taken a very long time coming to this decision. They probably took a very long time trying to find the perfect person to take the, you know, to take front and centre stage for the band. It's probably taken an agonising amount of time to come to this decision. It was probably one of the most difficult decisions they've had to make as a band. And, you know, I applaud them for it. You know, they're carrying on doing what they love. And they are not trying to brush Chester's legacy under the rug at all. You know, they are still celebrating and cheering for Chester. You know, they are still friends of Chester. They still love and adore Chester. There is no replacing him, and they are not replacing him. They are merely moving on because they have no other choice. You know, like I said at the beginning, there are several bands, iconic bands, through history, who have had their lead singers pass on or leave and they have brought in another singer and they have gone on to become incredibly successful bands like i said iron maiden black sabbath acdc pink floyd hundreds maybe even thousands of other bands have done this exact same thing so why be so aggressive over this one it's pointless it doesn't achieve anything it just makes you look like an angry bitter twisted individual you know if you don't like it that's fine move on don't listen to it that's your decision but there is no need to be that horrible about it i think it's a perfect fit but that's just me and like I said, when it was announced and when they did the live stream, there were literally thousands, hundreds and thousands of positive reactions to it. And I applaud that. And I'm glad there are people that enjoyed it as much as I did. There are people who actually have a logical, rational mind who have come to the same conclusion as I have. You know, they're not replacing Chester. They're moving on to a new era. Simple as that. 
They're not trying to replace him. They're not trying to find a facsimile of Chester. They're not trying to emulate Chester. They are simply moving on to a new era through lack of choice. You know, it wasn't their choice. If Chester was still here, they would still be going strong with Chester at the front. I'm absolutely certain of that. They just wanted to carry on making music. Simple as that. And there was no need for them to change the name of the band. There was no point. They could have, but they decided not to because the band, for the most part, is still the same band. You know, and whilst you may identify Chester as being Lincoln Park, the same could have been said for Bon Scott and ACDC. The same could have been said for Sid Barrett and Pink Floyd. The same could have been said for Bruce Dickinson and Iron Maiden when he initially left. The same could have been said for Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath when he initially left the band. You know, several other singers were brought in, in the interim, to fill in. It was still the same band. So, you know, this is still the same band, just with a new singer in a new era. Not replacing Chester, not trying to emulate him, just moving on to a new phase. Simple as that. Anyway, I don't know how many different ways I can say that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop and I'm going to leave it out as is. Like I said, I absolutely love the track. I think it's great. I really actually look forward to the new material. So... I'm very excited for that. But anyway, yes, we'll leave that as it is. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe if you haven't already, because uh, it would really, really help me out. You know, I've been doing this for about six years, and as it currently stands, not even 3% of people watching my videos are actually subscribed. So, you know, if you could subscribe, it would really, really help me out. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. It takes a fraction of a second, and it would make a huge difference to me and the channel. But anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.